number side, five news. Local sources describe the leader of the gang as an attractive figure who commands fanatical loyalty from his supporters. Him. There's people still alive today who has escaped from these people, luckily enough. And there's other people whose relatives didn't escape, and they realize the, the horrors that, and it brings back the horrors that was perpetrated on them. There's an informer in this very room. I thought this film, I have to say, is a thoroughly unpleasant, nasty film. And I, earlier I had said that I, I almost wish it hadn't been made. That's a widely held view on Belfast Shankill Road, where 19 Catholics were slaughtered by a loyalist gang in the 1970s. It's hard to believe today that this road was the scene of some of the most gruesome murders in British history. Victims were lifted off the street, taken to houses and social clubs where they were tortured for hours then slowly killed with knives and hatchets in an orgy of sectarian brutality. The victims' bodies were dumped in entries of the Shankill Road in a reign of terror lasting three years. The killers were known as the Shankill Butchers, a maverick gang connected to the loyalist UVF. The UVF's political wing at the peace talks in Stormont today say the film should be boycotted. It's made for all the wrong reasons. It's not even based on true fact. It's a complete exaggeration. I mean, I don't think it does any of us any good to be remembered of the dark sides of Northern Ireland, and particularly this film, which is made solely for one reason, and that's for financial reasons, with no consideration given to the bereaved or anyone injured during that bad, bad period that we have had in Northern Ireland. Owen McNamee wrote the novel on which Resurrection Man is based. He also scripted the film's screenplay. He defends it against those who say it could damage the peace process. There's a kind of strain of fiction and film about the North which uh, tends to be sort of apologetic and um, aren't we all wrong? I mean, I think that, that we have a responsibility and sort of duty to confront the violence and hopefully to, if you can explore it, um, you can open it out, you can open society out and hopefully find some way of, to find the source of the fear and therefore get rid of it. Milltown Cemetery in West Belfast, where many of the butcher's victims are buried including Cornelius Neeson. His brother Charlie believes the film only brings back painful memories. People who have lost their friends understand what I'm talking about. The people who haven't lost nobody, who have never lost their relatives, have, can really understand the, the horror that comes into your mind when you, when you hear Shankill Butchers. Uh, it's Ivan William, I've got to go out. What about your taste? Ah, don't worry. Two councils have even banned the film from cinemas in their boroughs. And only two movie houses in Belfast are screening Resurrection Man. I'm not a censor. I run a cinema. I provide films for people to come and watch. And I think that the people of our city are big enough and old enough to make their own decisions about what they should watch. My feeling about films is that everybody has a perfect right to make films about whatever subjects they choose and, and approach those subjects from whatever direction they choose. The rest of us, of course, have a perfect right not to go and see them. But I think that should be left to ourselves as individuals. It always worries me when, when councils, um, particularly some of our councils, start uh, you know, banning films. It's, uh, I'm always left with that age-old question of who guards the guardians and what right have they to tell me. I have, you know, don't go and see that film. The controversy over films like Resurrection Man threw up bigger questions about the Northern Ireland peace process. Questions like... Do we forgive and forget the horrors of the recent past in order to secure a peaceful settlement today? Or do we concentrate on those atrocities so they never happen again?